We've got uh, some elite cyclists and national champions around Tasmania to make sure that they're training in the right training zones to inform their, their training so that they're optimising their training. Going for really as long as, the, as you can go. It's all about power and wattage but I don't train to power yet, I never have but I'm probably going to start so it gives me a point and a number that I can use it on my training. What we've seen from some of the testing we've done of the elite cyclists is that their power meters don't always match what our uh, calibrated units say. And when you're dealing with just one or two percent difference, it can have influence uh, training zones significantly. We start off at 150 watts. We basically increase that by 25 watts every minute and we go until he can't go anymore. They're collecting the data that's going to give the athlete a good picture of their aerobic capacity and what we call thresholds that they can sustain. The students are conducting the, the tests. Probably the, my first experience seeing those type of results, probably 20-30% higher than what you see in the average population. Until you start working with like you know world-class athletes, you really don't get to kind of appreciate all the testing and the importance of it. So the students are contributing um, to, to the athlete's performance. All the cyclists today, you know, we gave them all good feedback and they, they're going to use all this, all this data to better their programming and, and their training. When you're thinking about elite and national world champions, potential Tour de France winners, optimising their performance is incredibly important. Come on. Awesome.